Fit and Ten Nation, I am your coach, Mark. And I'm your coach, Martina. And we are day 61, if you can believe it. We are nearing that final week here. And uh, Martina, should we start by talking about some foods? Oh, certainly. What do we have? Uh, let's talk about bread. <laughs> okay, is there any particular bread that you have seen in people's journals that is maybe not quite acceptable? Are there more acceptable breads? Are breads completely a write-off? I think that you would think that it is, but I don't, you know, because I think for some people, um, like some of them are very palatable. I would know because I'm very attracted to bread myself, but I also know that bread is an addiction and one that I shouldn't have around because then I end up having too much of it. But I've seen on some of our participants um, uh, food logs that they can actually, or they seem to be anyway on paper, able to eat more bread that I think necessary, yet within while staying within the lines of of your required macros. So how do you feel about that? You know, I, I will admit, I don't know enough about the nuances between breads because I know there's obviously going to be some differences in there. Uh, I just was recently listening to a popular podcast and they were talking about uh, folate being sprayed on all the grains and crops and this causes major disruption in the gut mi microbiome mm -hmm. and this leads to a whole host of issues and so therefore you kind of want to stay away it's really hard to stay away from breads in general that uh that have this because it's just so widespread so and what that's what the paleo diet actually is about right so yep and then it makes actually a, a little bit hard for like the modern person to eat a healthy diet because unless and for example i don't like particularly um starches you know that i don't like potatoes i don't care for things of the sort then then when i'm looking for carbohydrates usually i find my fill with you know cereal and grains and things of the sort so i think i personally think again let's say like you take a regular white bread i think it, it doesn't have much for it except that it's a carbohydrate. So I know that you like food that actually bring in more nutrients. Like, there's not really anything in white bread. Nutrients. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nutrients. Yep. There's not really anything in white bread that it that bring it brings you besides just like its caloric value, right? So and that's why I'm thinking that if you have one slice a day or two slices a day, we're okay. We see some people having six, seven, eight. You know, given that you give them 100 grams of carbs or 200 grams per, uh, of carb per day. Again, I don't think that it's the end of the world because in, in the end, this is a game of macros for a certain purpose. But I think that in terms of having something like being, you know, like nourishing the body, it, that, that's not it. Yeah, I mean, macros matter, obviously. It's sort of just underneath that is, you know, food is being really, um, for lack of better words, molested. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's just it's so hard to find food that is... Nourishing. Well, not nourishing, but that has not had something done to it right. that uh, causes some kind of, I don't even know if allergy is the right word. I, it's beyond allergy. It's like, it's almost malady, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, like an attack of, yeah. Uh, yeah, of our immune system or, of, yeah, yeah, I understand what you're saying, yeah. But again, at the same time, I think that anything mm -hmm. in small amount is... You know, sort yeah. of belongs. And then in the end, you know, if you get attacked from all sides, I see what you're... But if somebody does every or a lot of things right, mm -hmm. I think that having, you know, a couple of slices of bread to go with your eggs in the morning, not going to kill you. Yeah, what kind of bread would you have? <laughs> I like sourdough because I think the digestibility is better. Yep. And then I, you know, okay. I'm, I'm not a fan of, uh, of uh, like yourself, of these like a hearty, like old school bread with like lots of fiber in it and mm -hmm. the brown bread and the rye bread but i think that they would be probably better than wheat in general mm -hmm. yeah i mean i definitely notice that if i have sourdough mm -hmm. it does sit a little bit better mm -hmm. uh typically if i have tubers i don't seem to get that same sort of bloated effect as as if i or when i have um, a lot of pretty much any kind of rice will do that to me mm -hmm. Uh, oatmeal even does it to me. I should probably try organic, actually. Mm -hmm. Organic oatmeal would be interesting to see if it, if it does that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and most breads, mm -hmm. you know. But like you said, too, it also will depend on the amount of what you eat. So, for example, if you're lactose intolerant and you have two tablespoons of milk in your tea, you're probably not going to have any problem because the amount is so little. So, if you're having... Let's just say, you know, Six a bit of bread. Yeah. Or, well, I was going to say, if you're having a bit of bread that has gluten in it and you're having it here and there, 
you might be able to get away with it. Uh, what's your opinion on rye bread? Just quickly here. I like it, you know, right. like uh, coming yep. my, with my mom coming from the Czech Republic, it's very <coughs> widespread there. But yep. again, like it, we're talking about foods that we don't actually really know what's yep. in it, what's in what it? It's, it's been sprayed with, how it's being processed. Some of the processing of those have been chemically, right, mm -hmm. instead of organically or, or mm -hmm. manually or so, or mechanically even. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's hard to say. Yeah, I mean, I guess the, at the end of the day, I'd say probably limit your bread intake. Uh, and try to include sources of undisturbed carbohydrates. Yeah. I think you're pretty safe to go with uh, things like potatoes, uh, yams. Ground, right? Yeah, so. um, probably if you're eating things like organic oatmeal, maybe certain forms of organic rice, mm -hmm. probably gonna have better, uh, better tolerability with those. All right, let's talk about, um, how are we doing here for time? All right, deli meat. I love it. Yeah. I love the taste of it. I was raised on it. Uh, I've been eating deli meats my entire life. Mm -hmm. I realized that there are products in there, again, chemical products for, you know, yeah. preservation that are not so good for the body. But I think, again, it's a question. It's just so practical, you know, and then I like multiple sources of protein within the same. I love my egg whites with ham. I like my, uh, my you know, yes, I, I like to just mix and match my, uh, my food. So I really enjoy it. I don't have too much of it. I think that for the three, four ounces of ham or roast beef or you know prosciutto that i have a day you know i'm not going to die from it you know if you look at original quote deli meats it was really just meat it was kind of like cured right like it was cured just cured or it, dried or a combination of both right yeah. so it was just really meat with salt yeah essentially yeah. so that is totally acceptable mm. But when it comes to these... Uh, these nitrates fueled up. Yeah, the, some of these preservatives like nitrates and stuff like that, we want to uh, avoid these. Yeah, so uh, then you can you can talk about like organic version or yeah. like cleaner sources, you don't have to know where they come from, etc. Yeah, if, you were, if we're just talking about uh, cured meats, if they're just salted or they're they're brined, dried or yeah, brined, or dry. this is probably okay. So if you go to uh, an actual... Uh, deli or um, perhaps a butchery. a butchery. You'll probably get some really good quality deli meats and you're probably going to be okay with it. Mm -hmm. But buying the prepackaged deli meats, for sure, not a good way to go. Um, all right, Martina, what about dieting while traveling? All, this all right, how do we do this? Well, you know, a lot of people don't seem to know, you know, you and I, we always travel with our food and we, we've shared this for a long time and people are always looking at us with big bright eyes. Like, can you, you know, move an apple over the border? And the answer is absolutely. So, you, you know, even when we went to Africa, we took our chicken and our egg whites with us. But um, basically, I like the idea of, of bringing at least the sources of protein are like the easiest to travel with. So, you know, a pre cook the meat and freeze it, block freeze it in general, so they will get to destination um, just the same way. And you and I, we always take food with us in our little, you know, containers, like our, you know, food containers, and then, and we just, we travel with it all the time. It's, it's the easiest thing. I don't like to take vegetables. They don't travel well, and they don't like it um, when you, you cross borders with them. And then I like, you know, like a, we've taken like a macadamia oil, we've taken egg whites, which in some countries is not readily available, like in Cameroon. Um, so it's, it's really easy to take your food with you and at least the basics of it, right? And then once you get there, you can, like, again, you can get your kitchen, you can, you know, you can outfit your kitchen with your, like your eggs and everything that you need. But I take the olive oil with us, we take the salt with us, we take um, usually our meats, which are the hardest to find, and then we do with that. Yeah, it tr well, traveling is super easy. People always think mm -hmm. this is hard. This is actually the easiest part. You just pre-make your meals. I put them in Ziplocs. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not the most, uh, maybe it's not the greatest thing to put it into, you know, Ziploc bags, but it just makes it lighter. And uh, I will pack whatever I need, five, six meals. When I traveled to Africa this year, mm -hmm. I, I packed, I think I packed seven meals with me, pre-packed pre meals. Um, they were, if I remember correctly, they were some form of meat and potato and and vegetables, vegetables yeah. and so what i would do is i'd take two or three meals with me that were not frozen the rest i would freeze mm -hmm. and i had all my meals for the 30 hour trip that i went on Journey. and when i arrived i think i had maybe one meal left with me and uh and then we went to you know a grocery store well luckily you know uh your family had food uh, bought for us, us ready yeah. there um now if you are not staying in an airbnb 
or you don't have access to a kitchen. But you what know, do you do? I, what I've done the same thing. Like last time, for example, last time I went to Toronto, for example, I had this that this room with just a um, a bar fridge, and then I actually utilized the bar fridge, right? So instead of bringing like a block of you know, mm -hmm. fifteen chicken breasts pre, I, I brought these meals that you're talking about pre packaged and pre frozen. Mm -hmm. So I had a whole bunch of meals with me, and then you know, took all the alcohol out of the bar fridge, put my food in there, and I had food for three days. Yeah. You, you might say like, oh, that just seems like so much work. I mean, I'm not going to do that. It's like, okay, well, you can you can choose not to. That's fine. But just know that you're going to have to eat out. And that's just going to be, which is another question I have here, which we'll get to probably in our next video. Yeah. Uh, but just know you're going to have to resort to things that may not be uh, the best for your diet. Indeed. So you, it's again, at the end of the day, it's just a choice. It's not hard to make a bunch of meals. You know, on the I, contrary, I find that it's like it's pretty targeted work, right? It's like, yeah, I, I buy the food that I'm gonna make and I pre plan my meals that I'm gonna have for the past, uh, the next week. Or I go to Toronto and I'm like, oh, like where am I going to eat? You know, which restaurant? And then I'm gonna take an Uber, I'm gonna go to the restaurant, I'm gonna eat food I'm not supposed to have. Then I'm gonna pay extra money, spend extra time, mm -hmm. and we'll be disorganized basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really, it's really, and everybody says, oh no, you can't take food through onto the plane, you can't go, you can't travel overseas with food. I do it all the time. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say I do it all the time. It's not like I travel all the time. But, you know, the I, I went overseas actually twice this year. Mm -hmm. And and then to Europe, that's... we had no problem. To Africa, we had yeah. no problem. So, and we do it over the border yeah. to the States every, every year. Yeah. All right. Let's get to the message of the day here. Uh, personal responsibility is the key to solving your problems. Personal responsibility is key to solving your problems. If you have a problem, figure out a way or a solution to it. More often than not, you can figure out if you take enough responsibility, you can figure out uh, how to get around it. And if you you know, made the mistake or something happened, you can probably go back and look at how you could have or what you could have done to avoid it by taking personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. If you take responsibility, you'll have less problems. It's really that simple. Positive energy, positive vibes, believe in yourself for the love of God, give some gratitude, and we will talk to you all very soon.